Hey guys, Ant here from Musk Squad. Back in here with my round two of our 2017 NAIC format tournament. I'm on the left playing Desi Tales. I posted my deck list. I'm playing Igor Costa's top four list from that tournament. And on my right, uh, my buddy Jackson here is playing Vika Bulu. Uh, I'm not sure what list he's playing. I know there was a couple Bulus that did well at that tournament. So I think he's playing a similar list because he's playing Fighting Fury Belts. So we're just setting up here. And um, yeah, but before we get the game, uh, it'd be cool if you guys check out um, my Twitch. Same handle, twitch.tv slash NJ. Check me out on Twitter as well. It's on the screen, at MostSquadNJ. I would appreciate the follows and fallback. Um, I've been really focusing on old formats a lot, uh, several different formats, and I'm currently testing post-rotation, uh, current standard, sword and shield on, uh, battle styles as well included. So uh, I'm not sure who wins a flip here, but it looks like we're all set to go. But if you guys could check me out on all social media, that'd be great. Um, Instagram as well, same handle. But uh, I'm not sure who went first here. But my opponent, I'm going first, so I do have a Shaman start. I'm going to attach a Choice Band. My opponent has a Bulu start. The starter you do want to see for Bulu. You don't want to see a Shaman start here. So I'm just going to play N. Play Forest of Giant Plant and then play N. And uh, we're both going to shuffle up and draw six here. But, um... So, my strat is definitely going to want to, like, start feathering. I play a Espeon EX that has uh, Miraculous Shine, I think the attack's called, where it de evolves all your opponent's Pokemon. So, I'm definitely going to want to, like, get 70 damage onto the Vika Bolts and then de-evolve them into the Crystal Killing the Grubbins. Um, they usually rare candy straight into Vika Bolt anyway. So, it would kill the Grubbins. After I de-evolve them, obviously. So, uh, I'm not sure what my hand is, but, um... Looks like I'm not, like, playing cards much. But, uh, I think I just pass. Wow. Terrible end. So, my opponent... I mean, he can't kill me. He does get the grass energy, so we will be seeing a horn attack for at least 30 onto this Shaman. Let's see if he has a good start. He's gonna play a, a top of Lele down he's gonna wonder tag he gets to search his deck for a supporter card and use it so uh, I wonder if he plays the Bridget uh, the, I believe the list from the, the NAIC actually did play Bridget so he does have the Bridget so we're probably gonna see two Grubbins and something else probably another Bulu two Grubbins right on cue here most likely he's gonna grab another Bulu I do like those full art bulus. Those are just so sick looking. That card was so insane. And this, like, this, it, it got more popular the format after the next year. I think it saw a rise in play. Like, it was a good Zora. It was a good Gonzora. Just doing 210 with Choice Band, which is huge. Just like rinsing and repeating with Beakable. Just reloading the shotgun and just blowing off. So he's going to bench. The uh, obviously with Bridget, it has to go straight to bench. The two Grubbins and the Bulu. He has his attachment down. This is the turn one Bulu wants to see. So he's going to attach a Fighting Fury Belt, which is annoying, putting this Bulu at 220 HP. Also doing 10 more damage to his attack. He's going to play an Ultra Ball down. I uh, wonder what he gets here. He does have one more bench spot. It's kind of tough to see his bench from his camera angle. That is his discard pile to the right of that. Bulu. So his bench is Lele, two Grubbins, and a Bulu. Looks like he has a Shaman. So he's probably going for extra dick here. Most likely trying to find the rare candy Vika Bolt combo here. He wants to find those pieces to set up the strong charges from Vika Bolt to start powering up uh, Vika uh, Tapu Bulu to start using the Nature's Judgment attack. So he sets up. I'm not sure how many cards he gets to see off of that, but probably a good amount he did have a, a small hang after that ultra ball so we're going to be seeing a horn attack for 40 because of the fighting fury belt and i need to start studying on my board or i'm about to get docked so let's see what i could do here um i have an ultra ball so at least we won't be getting docked here that's a good thing probably going to grab a rallet 
would imagine I have to grab a rail. I have to start setting up some type of. I have to set up these feather arrows. I have to set up an attacker. I mean, worst case scenario, I could sky return for 60 if I find a DC and getting the shaman off my board, preventing a two prize knockout. But the thing is, I would have to promote something else. So I have to definitely get. Okay, so Forest of Giant Plants is out, so I'm gonna just get the Dartrix. I play another Ultra Ball into the Dartrix, getting rid of a Field Blower and a Lysander. The first Ultra Ball got rid of a Floatstone and a Alolan Ninetales GX. So, uh, my last card is a Sycamore High Five, Clean Hand of Seven coming off here. Let's see what I grab up. I do see a Rowlet, but I don't see much else. I don't think I, I don't even think I grabbed the uh, DCE off of that Sycamore as well. Playing a level ball, probably grabbing a Dartrix here. So I'm having two Dartrix online. Let's see if I have a Decidueye. So I at least can start Feather Arrowing those Grubbins. Um, I'm going to play a Trainer's Mill. Let's see what, do I grab anything off this? Looking at my hand. I don't even think I have a Supporter in hand for the next turn. So, I'm just going to be played safe and grab the Sycamore. You know, that's what I need for my following turn. I don't even have a supporter in hand, so I definitely need to grab that. I think I saw a Field Blower in there as well, which is kind of useless right now. But even though that uh, Fighting Fury Belt is going to be annoying to deal with. So, I, I do have an attachment. I'm going to get it down on the uh, Dark Trick, and I'm just going to pass. Very slow turn two, for, especially for a Forest of Giants Plants deck like the Sijuai. I should be popping off. So my opponent is going to play Ultra Ball, probably going to be seeing... Okay, he had a Heavy Ball. He's discarding the Heavy Ball. So he could have got the the Vika Volt actually off of the Heavy Ball. So not maybe he, he probably doesn't have the Rare Candy in hand, so... Um, not sure what he grabs off of this. I would have definitely just still Heavy Balled for the Vika Volt. Oh, okay. He's grabbing a charger bug. Okay, he grabs charger bug. I don't think you could grab it with heavy ball. So smart, and that's actually annoying because that thing has 90 HP, and if I de evolve it, I have to do 90 damage instead of the 70 to the grub in. But so it, I mean, it it helps with the de evolve because if I can't kill it and de evolve. He could just evolve right back into the vehicle. He doesn't have to have rare candy like the Grubbin would need. So, he's probably just anticipating Feather Arrows. He just wants to at least prolong my Feather Arrows onto that. And he's going to Horn Attack for another 40. Putting this thing at 80. I'm going to play Rescue Stretcher. Uh, I only have one target in my discard pile. So, I'm just going to put the Nine Tails to deck. Uh, Rescue Stretcher says you have to put three Pokemon... But since if you have less than three, obviously you just fulfill as much as you can. So I'm putting it to deck. Uh, the nine tails could come in handy just for for just doing uh, getting the 70 onto grub and like helps with the math better. I'm gonna have to bench this uh, Espeon now because I've already played one stretcher and um, I can't discard this Espeon. So I play, I put a field blo uh, flow stone on it, and play Sycamore. Benching a Rowlet, playing level ball, probably grabbing. So I have three Dartrix and no Decidueyes. Um, I'm not sure if I have Decidueyes in my hand. I probably would have de-evolved it. At least let me get a um, DCE so I can get the Shaman off my board and save two prizes on his turn. So I Trainer's Mill, grabbing a Sycamore off the Trainer's Mill for the second turn in a row for my following turn. Uh, let's see if I have a Decidueye in my hand, or at least a DCE. The DCE would, would kind of be good, okay, even if I whiff Decidueyes. So I do have the DCE. I'm going to set up here for three cards, it looks like. Um, I do find a Decidueye off the setup. Two Decidueyes off setup, so good. It's a great turn. Stabilizing. Going to be using two Feather Arrows here. Definitely going to be probably putting them onto the Charger Bug. Again, I need to have 90 HP, 90 damage on that thing. And I'm going to Sky Return for 60 damage onto this Bulu. Putting it into my hand. Uh, just thinking about what I want to sacrifice. He's 
probably gonna take a knockout here. So I'm just gonna give up a single prize, giving up this Dartrix here. He most likely has Vika Bolt, a way to get Vika Bolt here. So he's gonna start strong charging this turn. Um, so right on cue, he's gonna evolve that Charger Bug into a Vika Bolt. Strong charge is online. So we will be seeing He's going to play Skyla, grabbing a trainer card. So we will be seeing this Bulu hit for a lot of damage this turn. Uh, he could Nature's Judgment for 130 with no discard, killing this um, Dartrix very easily. Uh, he, he doesn't have license, so he's going to grab a Rare Candy with his Skyla. He's going to play the Rare Candy and has a Heavy Ball. So we're going to be seeing two Vega Bolts this turn. And most likely probably seeing two Strong Charges, so... He's probably going to set up two Bulus here. Because he has a bench Bulu. So his bench is Shaman, Lele, Vigable, Vigable, Bulu. So he has a setup. This is what you want to see with Bulu. The setup is complete. Now it's just rinse and repeat, blowing things up. Unfortunately, with the Fighting Fury Belt, the most damage he can do is 190 from Nature's Judgment. So he's going to use a strong charge, grabbing a grass and lightning from deck putting it onto the active and then grabbing a lightning to the other bulu and grabbing a grass to that bulu so just setting up two bulus here in case this one gets knocked out the backup one is somewhat ready to go you just need one more attachment or one more strong charge onto that so he most likely will be doing Nature Judgment for 130 with no discard, killing this Dartrix, taking one prize, going to five. And I still have six prize cards remaining. So he still has an attached for turn, so we could see very well see a grass attachment to the Bulu. He just was looking up what Decidueye GX is. He's actually kind of new to this format. They just wanted to look up what uh, what that does, and he's actually looking up what Espeon EX does. But he was actually looking up Espeon GX, and I don't know if he was familiar with Miraculous Shine because I, it looks like that's the GX, and I remember him saying he's like, "Oh, I I thought you confused with your first attack." I was like, "Nah, this is EX." So he does Nature Judgment for 130. Let me take a prize going to five. I'm at six. I'm gonna promote the SBN with a flow stone because I have free retreat, obviously. Um, I do have a DC in hand because of the sky return and a choice ban. So this Bulu currently has 60 damage, so he has one so 220. He has 160. I could kill this Bulu. I could do two feather arrows to it and then um, Razor Leaf with Choice Ban and DCE for 120 killing it. I don't know if if I really want to kill this this turn. Um, again, I kind of want my Feather Arrows to start going to the Grubbins and Vega Bolts, so uh, I'm not necessarily worried about killing this thing right now. I'm gonna attach the DCE to Decidueye. Maybe I do take the knockout here. Maybe I, uh, or oh, actually if I find a Field Blower, I wouldn't even need, and I do find a Field Blower, okay. So I trainer's mail hit the field blower. So I don't even need to feather out of the active now. I could just get rid of the fighting fury belt and just razor leaf it for 120 with the choice ban. And he, he has 60 damage on him already. So this is a huge turn for me here. I'm going to be able to get the two feather arrows onto the um, charger bug, putting it at 80 damage now. And I'm going to set up here for a couple extra cards for three cards. Um. I'm going to play N. I'm going to shuffle my opponent to 5. I'm going to see a fresh new hand to 6. So this is a great turn for me here. I was able to find the field blower. So again, uh, Rage Leaf does 120. The active top of Lily currently has 60 damage from the sky return with choice ban. So I'm going to put that charge bug at 80 after my two feather arrows. I would need one more feather arrow on that to get it ready for the, um, for the Miraculous Shine Diavol play. And I have to start setting up damage so I could do my next turn I could do one on there and one on the other one so not a bad turn for me so I'm putting two feather arrows on that Vega Volt it currently is at 80 HP got a free retreat into uh, 
Decidueye, and I'm going to Razor Leaf for Knockout, going to four prizes here. So, huge turn. Sticking to my game plan, Feather Arrowing those Grubbins, Nika Volts, and taking out Knockouts and preventing Knockouts. So, he can't one-shot uh, Decidueye. Decidueye GX has 240 HP, so the most he could do with the Choice Band is 210. So, that's, that's a good thing that... Uh, he can't one shot so he's gonna play a field board getting rid of the forest of giant plants and my choice band on the active here and let's see what else he does so he does have a strong he has two strong charges available still uh, i wonder if he has an attachment for turn he's gonna so he's just gonna announce strong charge here probably getting a grass to the active and then I don't know where he would put a lightning. He could put it on. I mean, he could set up a shaman as well. So what he could do actually, what would be a pretty good play, is start setting up a nature's judgment and a shaman on the back, right? So you, with a choice ban, you do 210 to this decidueye. You then could take the knockout with the shaman with sky return doing 30 so 210 plus 30 is 240 perfect math and also taking away the threat of an easy two prizer on his field because a razor leaf with a choice band would kill that shaman so that shaman is a huge target right now so i i would have gone that way i would have tried setting up a nature's, ju nature's judgment for 210 and then cleaning off a decidueye with a shaman sky return which would be a huge play so he does use his strong charges. He looks like he puts a grass onto the active and a lightning onto the Lele. He's gonna play an Ultra Ball. I think so. He probably grab another Bulu here, just in case this one goes down. He has a secondary attacker. Um, let's usually play three to four Bulus. So I would imagine he grabs a. a okay, that looks like a Tapu Koko promo. So. Interesting choice. Maybe maybe he prized his other Bulus. He does have five prize cards, so the possibility is very high that they're in his prize card. But otherwise, the Coco does uh, give him a free retreat pivot, and he's going to use a second strong charge and put a lightning onto that. And actually, it's not a bad play because uh, that Bulu, that Coco, if fully powered up with two lightnings and a colorless, could one shot my Shaman hit for weakness so and i have two shamans on my board so maybe he's he's just noticing that he could you know it'll trade prize in his favor where he just kills a two prizer with a single prizer so could probably a good choice here because i would need to sky return twice to take those out so probably just taking advantage of my weakness on, of those shamans so probably a really smart play here so he does grab the lighting i don't think he's attached for turn He's gonna play VS Seeker. Uh, he's gonna okay. He's gonna play Sycamore. See a fresh new hand of seven. I don't think we still have yet to see an attachment for turn because the first strong charge was the Grass of the Active Lightning to Lele. His second strong charge was the Lightning to Coco. So yeah, I don't think he's manually attached here yet. So. If he's just gonna nature judgment no discard for 120. He also just two shots this thing So again in order for me to not I don't want to KO this active Bulu either um, I would have to feather arrow uh, Not even I would need to find choice band as well. So that's not an option right now So he probably looks at it like you know, what? I'm gonna two shot this thing. He could even use uh, the heat the Tabu Bulu's GX attack which hits for 150 and heals himself. So he could take out my Decidueye on my following turn and then heal himself and then put himself in a very strong position. So I put one Feather Arrow on that charger by putting it at 100 damage which is ready to go and then 20 on the other Vika Wolf. So I, I still need three more Feather Arrows on that other Vika Wolf to set up the Miraculous Shine play where I want it to be. Um, so I'm just thinking of what to do here and so I'm gonna use I think this is a good opportunity was a good chance for me to use a uh, hollow hunt here so the reason I use hollow hunt is because I wanted to grab choice band so that um, I grab stretcher because I'm, I'm anticipating this 
Decidueye dying, so I want to stretch her back some owls back into my deck. So I grab Stretcher, Choice Band, Lysander. So I look at it this way. I have four prizes remaining. I, I'm going to take a double knockout on the two Grubbins. And then I could just Lysander Shaman for a game. So that's why I did that. So he's at five prizes. So I could sacrifice this Decidueye. He still goes to three. He still would need two more knockouts. Or I need two knockouts. But I would get them faster. So... He's going to attach manually, or I'm not sure what that was. Maybe it was a float stone. He's going to play N, which is kind of annoying because the cards that I got back from uh, Hollow Hunt are now going to be in my deck. And then my hand's going to be only four cards now due to the end because I'm on that four prize where he sees five. So he does have knockout here with no discard onto the Decidueye. He's going to go to three prizes. So... Now I'm, th I'm rethinking the Hollow Hunt play. Well, I needed those resources back, I think. I needed Choice Band back. I needed a Lysander. I was down a Lysander already. So, I think it was, I think, still think it was good to do that. So he's gonna find a Recycler here. He's gonna put five energies back into his deck, which is such a good card for Boo after using those Nature Judgments and discarding. You could just find them back and shuffle them too, so that strong charges have uh, targets from your deck. So he's gonna he's gonna put back five grass and one lightning to deck. Then I think he's just gonna use strong charge while he's in the deck. Yeah, he is. So, um, I think he, so he's gonna put a grass from strong charge onto that Coco, and let's see where he puts another energy. He's gonna put it onto Tapu Lele. Okay, so I think that Lele has two energies right now, and I think that's a float stone, or maybe even a choice band. Or a fighting fury bell. I'm not sure, I can't really see it, but um So he's gonna use an energy onto the shaman as well. So just setting up his board for alternate attackers. He's gonna take two prizes here, killing this he gets to kill this Decidueye with Nature's Judgment no discard for 120. He's going to go to three prizes. And still in a pretty good shape. I mean, even losing those Vega Volts, which I'm probably going to do on my turn, he um, he has a fully powered Bulu with no disc, like with, with full energy. So that does 210 now. So he has a really good board state. I mean, the game is still, he's technically ahead on prizes, but uh, I only have one feather arrow too, and that Vika Volt, I have to get three feather arrows onto that Vika Volt, but luckily that other Grubbin would need a rare candy, so that could be an issue. So I'm going to play a Forest of Giant Plants, definitely going to be doing a Devolve play here at least take one prize but see then this is going to throw off my math you know i needed to i needed to get the d of all for two prizes so i play ultra ball i wonder if i have a decidua i don't have a decidua i'm going to grab top of the lele i'm going to wonder tag grab a sycamore here not sure maybe my hand is completely my, well obviously i only have a one party hand so it definitely was dead so i i probably just grabbed instead of grabbing the decidue i figured i'd just grab a sycamore to see more cards anyway so uh i'm gonna grab i'm gonna sycamore away a, on a low and pick c7 definitely want to see some owls here do i get the decidue i i do so i have two feather arrows uh, I'm unfortunately one feather arrow short of killing that other grub and it only has 20 damage on it so it's gonna go to 60 it's gonna have 10 HP remaining but again still slows him down because he has to find a rare candy to evolve it back into Vega Bolt so I do attach DCE to the Espeon for Miraculous Shine this is where my opponent wasn't familiar with what Miraculous Shine does he was looking at the wrong Espeon could I mean it probably maybe could have hindered his gameplay 
if he knew what he did. But uh, I'm using two feather arrows, putting that at 60 now. And then I'm going to use Miraculous Shine and de evolve those two Vega Volts, killing one and making the other one into a 60 damage, 60 HP damaged Corrubbit with 10 HP remaining. Again, my opponent's still reading what the card does. He was looking at the wrong one. And I'm just kind of explaining to him that uh, if he evolves any evolutions, you put those evolutions into your hand. And he's a bit shocked by that attack. Kind of threw him off, I guess. But um, yeah, he takes the Vega Volts into his hand. That Grubbin's gonna be at 60 HP remaining. The Charger Buck does die. I'm gonna go to three prizes. We're both tied at three. And that Grubbin survives, but it has 60 damage on it currently. So he does have knockout on my Espeon here, and he's gonna go to one prize. So this is kind of scary because he has that Coco still. He's just a Lysander away from winning the game. He just kills the Coco. Kills my shaman with his Coco, I mean. So he could even GX here. So for no discard. Yeah, he could GX and leave the energies on. Because it does 180 to my 170 S bound. So that that's the play. You GX here. And you just have two attackers away. You just have two attackers for game. So a feather arrow does kill that grubbin. I'll take the prize, and then I could kill the shaman. One feather. Yeah, I could kill the shaman. I would need so I need Lysander DCE to win the game on my turn. That's the only way I win if I have Lysander DCE. So I could take three prizes on my turn. Uh, he's gonna play Ultra Ball, probably just thinning out here, getting up, getting rid of a choice band. And something else. Lysander. Uh, I would have saved that Lysander. Because if I don't take the three... If I, if I whiff the DZE Lysander, he just has game in hand with that Lysander. He must have another Lysander in hand then. Because he just wins with killing the Shaman with Tapu Koko. But still, I definitely would have even... I definitely don't discard Lysander because even if you get end, you know, you you want to have all the Lysanders available to you in your deck or hand. So I think discarding that is definitely wrong always there. So let's see what attack he does. Again, I would GX here. You hit for 180 and you leave the energies on. He's going to choose to dis use Nature's Judgment for 210, discarding, going down to one prize to my three. So, again, the only way I win here is DCE Lysander. Let's see if I have it. I have the DCE. I have Choice Band. I have Feather Arrow with a Grubbin. I actually remember this. I actually grabbed the I hit the last center off the prizes. That was the prize I just took from the Feather Arrow and the Grubbin. So I still have one more Feather Arrow. I bring up Shaman. I use the second Feather Arrow on the Shaman and then I, I hit it. I actually don't even need to. I have the choice ban. I, I, I hit 120. So that'll do it. Uh, I take round two. Uh, I'm currently 1 1. Unfortunately, that eliminates Jackson from contention. It's a double elimination tournament. So uh, that'll do it. I'm 1-1. I'll be posting my round 3 match after I play it. And thanks for watching, guys. Again, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Please check me out on social media, every platform, uh, at MuffSquadNJ. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, also, please join our old format Discord. I'll post the link below. Uh, we play all types of formats. We'd love for you guys to join. And uh, hope I look forward to seeing some new faces and some new names into the Discord. And again, thanks for watching. Take care, guys.